chairing that excellent session, uh, which uh, concludes the uh, conference for today. But before that, I want to try and sum up. And uh, I'm going to be very brief because there's no way I can cover three very complex areas in about five minutes. But I, I want to try and highlight what, for me, were some of the key uh, comments made during today. And I think our first session in terms of TB eradication uh, what I think was the most important statement that was made within that session is that TB eradication is an achievable goal. And uh, I think it's particularly important that we're hearing that coming from one of the leading epidemiologists, in fact, two of the leading epidemiologists on this island. Uh, but if we are going to achieve that goal, it's not going to happen quickly. And it will take a concerted industry-wide effort and a joined-up approach in terms of both industry and government working together. But the fact that it is an achievable goal, I think, is really significant, and the fact that we've seen it being eradicated in other countries like Australia and close to eradication in New Zealand, I think, is at least uh, a motivation for us to, to continue to pursue that goal. The, the second session was around the whole question of the power of genetics and big data, and uh, I think both Stephen and Donna highlighted just how powerful the amount of information that we now have available to us could be if we harness that data correctly uh, and really make full use of it. And uh, to me, I think one of the big issues is that there is a serious risk that Northern Ireland could be left behind. Uh, and I think someone put the question up. Uh, the question was something like 20 years behind. Well, I think I remember asking a very similar question about 10 years ago when we were 10 years behind. Uh, we're now 20 years behind. We certainly don't want to be here in five years' time saying we're now 25 years behind the rest of the industry. So I am encouraged by what we heard from Wesley, uh, that there is real industry initiative in this area uh, and that there is engagement with the department. Uh, but certainly uh, when we see what uh, Donna has done, what Irish Cattle Breeding Federation have done, and I think uh, Donna probably undersold just how successful ICBF have been. Uh, they have gone from virtually nowhere in global dairy cow genetics to being either number one or number two in terms of dairy cattle breeding. And to me, uh, in a relatively short period of time, I mean, that initiative started about 15 years ago. So whilst we're behind at the moment, uh, and I would say we are 20 years behind uh, in terms of where Northern Ireland is positioned right now in terms of our ability to bring data together, the example from ICBF shows that with the right effort, with the right will and the right engagement, we could very quickly catch up uh, and uh, regain our place, if you like, at the top of that league table in terms of livestock genetics. And I think the lesson we have from ICBF is that we shouldn't so focus solely on dairy genetics. We need to apply the same principles and the same energy uh, to our beef sector and to our sheep sector. And that's where we can make fantastic progress. And we only have to look at the poultry sector uh, where that achievement has been made in both poultry and pig sector in where genetic progress here is on a par with anywhere else in the world. So I think, again, a, a very exciting opportunity. And the last session then on, on land management and ammonia, I wish we could say we solved the ammonia problem today. Uh, we probably at least focused on why we have a problem and some of the potential solutions to that problem, which I think is, is really significant. Uh, and I think you know, we also need to be very careful that whilst ammonia is the big issue right now, it's very easy to overfocus on what's important today. We actually need to be looking, as our motto says here, for livestock farming in 2030. And the research that we need to be investing in right now is not to answer today's problems. We should have had that research done 10 years ago. And that's what happened in the nitrates directive. Everybody knew nitrates and phosphorus was going to be an issue. There was a, a serious investment in research, and we had the evidence and that evidence was taken all the way to, to Brussels to present a very strong case for Northern Ireland as to why uh, we were not in the same category as everyone else and was really significant. The challenge we have with ammonia is we don't have the evidence and therefore we can't make that case. And whilst we're now investing, and I think for the reasons John has outlined, uh, we hadn't that investment made in a timely way, so we are now trying to catch up. But I think it's really important that we don't overinvest in one area and put all the focus on that area and forget about phosphorus 
and end up in five, ten years' time with a, a significant phosphorus issue because we've seen just how significant uh, that issue is uh, for the Dutch dairy industry. So I think it's about balance and it's also about vision and I think that is where the industry and the department uh, need to work together to ensure we are investing in the right research areas and that's why uh, we need to have our vision around science to support the industry uh, for 2030, not for 2020. Uh, that's already uh, facing us and we need to have the solutions there already. So I think um, our conference logo, if you like, of life, uh, happy science and indeed global science shaping livestock farming for 2030 is really important. We might need to change that to 2035 next year uh, in order to keep pace. Just very briefly then, I also want to take the opportunity uh, to highlight, and I should have moved on to that one, uh, that we've also, in your conference pack, this year's API Research Impacts 2018. This is the second edition. And really this is just uh, part of our, again, our communication strategy to highlight some of the other work that we're doing because AFPI covers a very broad range of scientific areas. Some might argue too broad a range for a relatively small organization, but we do uh, make every effort to tackle all of the sectors or issues that face all of the sectors in Northern Ireland. So just to give you a flavor for that, there are 18 examples of the range of, of scientific work we're involved in right across uh, all of the organization. And uh, we have a very major focus on improving our soils, obviously given the discussion we've had. Uh, we have a map there around phosphorus. One nutrient we haven't talked about today is sulfur. Very significant issue, and if John Bailey he was, saying, was here, he would be saying, in fact, we can produce a lot more grass uh, and a lot more forage if we correct sulfur deficiency as well as lime. So that's something we need to, to keep focus on, and there's a very useful article uh, on, on sulfur deficiency. We've also got a very significant food research program, uh, and Linda Farmer is here and a number of colleagues from Food Research Branch. And uh, a very interesting study published just recently, funded by uh, LMC, which is showing how good Northern Ireland lamb is and I don't think we have any New Zealand uh, people in the audience, so we can say that Northern Ireland uh, lamb rated every bit as well as New Zealand spring-born lamb in the months of January, February and March. So I would encourage you all to uh, choose Northern Ireland lamb in preference over uh, New Zealand lamb. A very important work going on beef flavour, uh, and obviously that's something we need to focus on in the future as well in terms of sustaining markets. Uh, we need to be able to demonstrate that beef produced in Northern Ireland has uh, tremendous flavour and succulence and is the product to buy not just here but right across the UK and the rest of Europe. And we also do work in Loch Ness Eels, very interesting story coming up there in terms of uh, some of the particular characteristics of Loch Ness Eels but that's a story for uh, another day. And then finally, uh, I want to mention some of the work that uh, Stanley uh, McDowell and his colleagues in Veterinary Science Division undertake in terms of protecting animal health. And this is a significant part of our statutory and diagnostic program uh, where we're involved in disease surveillance, in sheep health planning, and also uh, veterinary epidemiology, as you already heard, uh, in terms of the BT, uh, bovine TB story. So I would encourage you all to, to have a flick through just to get a flavour for uh, some of the, the wider range of work we're involved in. And hopefully those areas will be featured in future conferences along with the behaviour change suggestion uh, that we've had from, from John Gilliland, which probably applies across all our areas. So at this stage, I really want to particularly thank the chairs. Uh, all three chairs have done a fantastic job uh, in keeping our speakers to time. And uh, thank you for that. We've more or less uh, finished on time. Thanks to our speakers. And in particular, uh, Simon Moore coming up from Dublin. Uh, Donna Berry, uh, fantastic speaker. I don't want to single one speaker out, but just to give you a flavor of Donna's enthusiasm. Uh, I was coming up to the dinner here last night at 7 o'clock, and I got an email from Donna saying, I'm leaving Cork at the moment, and I hope to be there at half 12. He arrived in here at half 12, and... Stephen Morrison tells me that at one o'clock he was sharing his presentation with Stephen so that they could ensure they had compatible presentations for the session. And yet he comes up this morning absolutely vibrant and passionate. That's the way we want our scientists to be. That's what a good scientist is about. 
Uh, well, maybe some of you disagree, but to me, that's the way we want our scientists. We want energy, we want passion, and we want enthusiasm, and that's what we need in, in, in AFI. Uh, and also then, thanks to John for uh, starting off the last session, and also to thank our own AFI speakers, uh, Andrew, uh, Byrne, uh, Stephen Morrison, and Donica Doody, again, for putting AFI uh, science in, in context. So finally, thank you all for attending. I hope it's been a useful day. Um, I'm not quite, we are doing uh, post-conference um, feedback, but I understand rather than giving you a sheet, which most of you won't fill in as you leave, we do have your email, so uh, we will be able to follow up and contact you by email with uh, a doodle poll or some way of connecting your thoughts. And we would very much welcome any feedback on the conference and in particular, uh, any themes that you would like us to cover next year. Uh, and I think that's really important in terms of planning. We would certainly like to, uh, to take those thoughts on board. So thank you all very much, and safe journey home. Thank you.